many of you know about this story? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this story it happens in Island Pond, Vermont. And the people that write about it, Gary D. Henry, who happened to be part of the CIA, a girl named Jessica Osment, and Aileen Aroma. So, this book was written, like I said, about Island Pond, Vermont. And it just happens to be that Island Pond, Vermont is where all this shit keeps on happening to me and my family. You see, it all started when we moved to Island Pond. And my daughter got lured from her 8th grade classroom by an IEP teacher named Mary Hare. And throughout the school year, Michael Knox, who if you look up Dr. Michael S. Knox on YouTube or Google or even call the Burlington County Courthouse in New Jersey. Let me provide that phone number, 609-288-9500. Ask about case number 2100-2715 and ask why it took 11 months to arrest Dr. Michael S. Knox on a rape charge as well as another charge and the fact is I reported back in 2007 that I was assaulted by Michael Knox and I reported in 2006 that I had been assaulted by Michael Knox and I witnessed a child being assaulted by Michael Knox and I also witnessed Michael Knox being abusive toward my daughter. And therefore, I decided to homeschool my children until the problem could be remedied. And out of retaliation, the state of Vermont took my children from me under false pretenses through the suggestion of Vermont State Police Trooper Amy Bassari, who had been feeding the kids alcohol. And I'm aware of that, and the kids will tell you about it today because they're adults now. As well as Jeffrey Noyce and the, uh, the computer that came up missing that held the information about what I'm telling you right now. So, the description of that story, of the girl in the book, it begins in the small town of Island Pond, Vermont. A sleepy little town, free of the stresses of... The modern day world and so um, however an evil has presented itself in the form of unspeakable and hidden crimes against a cherished citizen Charlotte Downs a beautiful spirit is forced to dwell within an evil family who shamelessly abuses her well, is that what happened to my daughter, Brianna, when she was taken from me and put in the custody and care of the IEP teacher, Mary Hare, and her husband, who was the supervisor of Border Patrol, Jeffrey Hare, who was founded to have abused my daughter. DCF recognized it, and I have the paper trail that proves it. Yeah, I didn't know about it at the time that it happened because they hid it from me. My daughter ran away from Island Pond, Vermont because she had been taken from me and placed in the care and custody of Jeffrey Hare, who sexually assaulted and physically, emotionally, and mentally abused my daughter. Supervisor of Border Patrol, Island Pond, Vermont. Yeah. And his teacher was the, I mean, his wife is the IEP teacher that lured my daughter from her classroom to her own personal IEP room. Mm -hmm. And then she was taking my daughter out of school during the day. And Jocelyn Gervais, the secretary, would tell me that it was because she was going to Walmart. In Littleton, New Hampshire, which would have been in one hour and 40 minutes each way. So where was my daughter really taken to? And why was my daughter even taken anywhere? 
She didn't have my permission to go anywhere with anybody. I am the mother. I am the parent. So why is it that they didn't ask me about taking my daughter out of school? Hmm? It's a mother's intuition. I knew something wasn't right and I called the school and that's just how I found out. When Jocelyn Gervais, the secretary, answered the phone and said that Brianna wasn't there, that Mary Hare had taken her to Walmart. Why the fuck did Mary take my daughter anywhere, scary Mary? I wanted those answers. So, Charlotte Downs, a beautiful spirit, is forced to dwell in. And so, uh, she was with a shamelessly, a shameless family, shamelessly being abused. An unfortunate accident frees her memory from 18 years of a horrible existence. However, in the deep recesses of her unconscious mind, the memories exist and remembers the faces and the times in which the abuse took place. While comatose and fighting for her life, a string of murders occurs within the town. A serial killer is on the loose and wrecking havoc on the small, ill-equipped town. Enter Brady Paxton, a celebrated and decorated FBI agent who systematically solved every strange crime assigned to him. When he visits the hospital and sees Charlotte lying unconscious in her bed, something strange came over him. Struck by her silent beauty, he began his investigation. As the murders happen, the killer leaves clues in the form of pennies in the small baggie stuffed into the pockets of the victims. He collected the evidence, but oddly, it all pointed to the sleeping Charlotte as the killer. The more he investigated the crimes as they happened, the more it implicates Charlotte. How could this be right? He asked himself. How can anyone murder someone when they are in such a state? Even the serial killer master, he didn't discount the paranormal in his investigations and believed that there were things that the universe has yet to explain. As the story resumes, he gathers the complete story of Charlotte Downs' history and he was shocked to read about all the abuses that the young woman endured in her short 24 years and sought to determine who or what was killing the people in her past life that abused her so heinously. The confusing complex story takes Paxton on adventures into vast forests looking for the perpetrator only to find more clues pointing directly to Charlotte. There are suspects galore, but none so strikingly obvious than the sleeping beauty in the hospital attached to miles of wires keeping her alive. Placing cameras in her hospital room, he saw what he thought were apparitions every time another murder occurred in town. She laid silent in her bed as another citizen of the town was killed with a mysterious weapon that doesn't exist in his vast knowledge of weaponry. Can Paxton unravel the myriad of mysteries surrounding Charlotte Downs and find a reasonable explanation of what, how, and who is perpetrating the crimes? This complex story will have you questioning what is real and what isn't. Okay, well, you know, it sounds a little familiar to my situation. Seems how they conspired to take my children away from me through the town of Island Pond, the school, DCF, Homeland Security, and more, right? Here it is, April of 22. This has been happening since 2007. I still carry the proof of fact that the abuse has been happening against myself and my family for many, many years. And I want justice, I want answers, and I wanna know why. Vermont State Police were allowed to write false reports and generate false charges against me. I want to know why in May of 2007, Teddy Miller was told by a Vermont State Trooper to take out of the NCIC a warrant that he had put in there frivolously for my arrest. I want to know why I was locked out of my home June of 2021. Elizabeth Cohen from Sevka in 
Bellows Falls area of Vermont called me and told me that she had to get done her job and she was just calling to let me know that she won't be there anymore. And she also made me aware that I was due my deposit back because I shouldn't have had to have been locked out of my apartment. I didn't do anything wrong. Now this all being during the pandemic, the state of Vermont, Northeast Kingdom, Island Pond, Vermont, the state of Vermont, the agencies and the government agencies continuously denied me assistance. The landlord, Michael Hatton, came to me on April 1st, a year ago, and told me that he feared for my life and that he couldn't believe the people that were after me. He doesn't understand it. But that he told me that I needed to take my daughter and my grandson and get out in the middle of the night. I have his wife on record telling me the same thing, that the police weren't doing their job and that the perpetrator shouldn't even be there. I was left notes on the floor in the hallway threatening my life. I posted a copy of it downtown in Island Pond. I also reported it to the police and the courts and the judge recognized it. He gave me a restraining order that's near up. I can tell you, I'm in Washington DC to file more charges and requesting an investigation into all about this. Due to the fact that my daughter went missing, she went missing and nobody would do anything about it. Not the Waterville Police Department, not the Maine State Police, not even Florida. Yet Florida acknowledged that my daughter went missing. So this is obvious. It conspired systematic from the top to the bottom. And when I say that, I'm talking from Homeland Security down to Homeland Security. Is that why all the charges have been dropped? Orlando? Orange County? Is that why all of my videos got deleted? I'm here in Washington, D.C. and I'm going to get somewhere with something. Paperwork? Documents? Notarized? And request for signature from Pennsylvania Avenue? to Pennsylvania Avenue. In that way, there's a good possibility that the mail won't get lost again now, will it, Vermont? State's Attorney General TJ. Hmm? Why did you frivolously and involuntarily hold my daughter in a medical ward called Rutland Regional Medical Center in a psych ward and try to kill her? I believe Fullheartedly that you're trying to kill my daughter to subdue her and to silence her. I want to know if anybody else is aware of what's going on. But I can tell you you're all going to be made aware of what's going on. And so was the United States Attorney General in Washington, D.C.